What's up guys, Winter Kills here and welcome to a brand new and updated deck profile for Block Dragon Burning Abyss. I think the last time I did an update for this was in October and the build has changed drastically uh, from the last time. So um, yeah, the deck has gone uh, under a ton of changes. Um, I expressed some of those changes in the test hand video I did last month I think, so if you guys haven't seen that, check that one out. Um, but yeah, this deck is uh, its a lot of fun. Uh, it has so many different different varying uh, lines of play um, when it comes to getting to your final combo. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Um, it's a really strong strategy um, that I think a lot of people overlook. Um, and it is very, um, you know, resilient when it comes to playing around hand traps and stuff like that. So uh, I have actually a full main side and uh, or full main extra and side deck that I'm going to be giving you guys as well alongside all the normal breakdowns that we're going to be doing etc etc um, because this is my go-to competitive deck at the moment so I have a side deck for you guys this time uh, so yeah let's go ahead and get started with the quick deck profile so to start for the profile we have three copies of mathematician uh, this is a amazing one card uh, cherubini of course uh, then we have three copies of gallus uh, then we have two copies of rhino warrior and one tour guide and then onto the dangers we have two copies of jackalope two copies of snake two copies of mothman and two copies of nessie then for the psychics we have one wielder and one tracker one sea archiver one edge sabers and then our bas consist of libic farfa seer and graf then we have three copies of block dragon arguably the star of the show three copies of gigantes no more rock spirit one copy of Fossil Dino, one copy of Gizmek Orochi, the Serpatron Sky Slasher, one Destrudo, the Lost Dragon's Frison, one Giant Rex, one Mecha Phantom Beast Lion, one Dotscaper, one Glow Bulb, and then rounding it off with three copies of Sekka's Light. That's it for the main deck. Now we'll go into the extra deck. So to start for the extra deck, we have two copies of Saryuja Skaldred, one Appaloosa Bow of the Goddess, one Boral Sword Dragon, one Mech Knight Crusadia Avermax, one Black Luster Soldier, Soldier of Chaos, one Curious, the Lightsworn Dominion, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Nightmare Cerberus, one Cherubini Ebon Angel of the Burning Abyss, one Dingus of the Orcus of the Evening Star, one Beatrice Lady of the Eternal, one Dante Traveler of the Burning Abyss, one Levier of the Sea Dragon, and one Naturia Beast. That rounds off the extra deck, and I'll just run through my side deck real quick currently. Again, the side deck may vary depending on your locals and things like that. So I have three copies of Nibiru for a combo, of course, three copies of Dino Wrestler Pankratops, three copies of Artifact Lancia, three copies of Droll and Lockbird. And this last slot could really be anything. I'm sort of up in the air about a different a bunch of different cards. Right now, it's just three evenly matched. Uh, we could also be Dark Lure No More and Twin Twister and things like that. So now we'll start with the starter cards. And of course, these are the cards that get our engine started, the cards that we want to see first, the things that have the sort of the easiest activation requirement, uh, cards that help us see more cards and things like that. So for the starter cards, I have picked out the three copies of Mathematician, three copies of Gallus, two copies of Rhino, one Tour Guide, and then of course, the three Sekka's Light. Now, uh, I chose these... Uh, specifically as the starters, um, you know, for very obvious reasons, um, and I'll explain. So, of course, Mathematician, uh, we have so many amazing targets to send off this card to get our play started, and uh, a couple of those are, are superior and additional extenders. Uh, some of those cards may be in the form of the Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, um, or Edgem Sabers, or Rhino Warrior and Sabers, um, you know, those all things you know, pair very well together with this card. So you can use this card essentially to be a one card Cherubini because you can either send the O-Lion to summon a level three token, which will link off the, itself and the Mathman into your Cherubini uh, to get your engine going. So, or you can send just the, uh, the Sabers, uh, you know, to stack something to summon out, make a Cherubini that way. If you open the Sabers, you can send Libic, summon the Sabers from your hand. Make Cherubini that way, uh, or you can go dump uh, Rhino Warrior, dump Mathematician if you need an extra Earth in your graveyard or whatever it may be uh, for Block Dragon plays, again, to get the Edgem Sabers out on the field to make Cherubini, um, which is insane. Uh, very easy activation requirement, you know, just normal summoning, activate the effect, so definitely a starter in my opinion. Next, we have Gallus the Star Beast. Um, this card is insane. Um, it's probably one of the best cards in the entire deck next to the Tour Guide herself. Uh, but basically, this card does so many things. It mills a card, it burns your opponent, uh, it's earth, it's level 3, it special summons itself for free, essentially. 
Uh, like, it just has everything you'd want in a card, minus its stats, which are pretty low, but again, that doesn't matter. You could technically use this, you know, mill and O-Lion, and then that's a Cherubini that way, but, you know, that is a lot of RNG, sure, um, but this card does so much. It's milling a card, it's an Earth Monster, level 3, it's everything you want in a card, and that's why 100% I would value it as a starter card. Now, next up, I have Phoenix Rhino Warrior, and this is a card that could also be considered as a, um, as a superior extender, uh, and for a couple reasons, uh, to be honest. Um, one, uh, this card oftentimes uh, is more valuable being sent to the graveyard off of one of your starting plays, but sometimes you can start your turn with this card, um, and it'll make your turns uh, a lot stronger. So, for example, um, a lot of times you won't have a good normal summon to follow up your turn, like something that has a meaningful impact as a normal summon. Um, and Rhino Warrior is a really good spot uh, and a really good card uh, for that sort of situation. So if you have a card like Gallus and Rhino together, uh, that plays out, you know, to be a much more powerful turn as to even opposed to like, you know, uh, a Psychic Tracker play or just BA plays. Um, just because like you can normal this uh, and then summon a Tracker or a Gallus or a Wielder, whatever it may be, and then link off and then immediately get the Rhino effect to dump the Edge of Sabres, a Libic, uh, you know, a Farfet to clear something immediately right when you go into your Cherubini. Uh, not to mention, it also gives all your Fiend-type monsters protection from battle and card effects, uh, which is insane. Um, so you can use this guy in combination with your BA monsters that we play, you know, to normal, and then special the BA. It won't die because this will protect it. Um, so yeah, this card is fantastic. Um, it, it protects all your uh, Fiend monsters on your field, uh, which is great. So this card I do like a lot. 100% uh, I would value it as a starter. It's not the highest quality of starter, but a starter nonetheless because there's so many other cards that pair with this uh, And simply this getting linked off to the graveyard and protecting your field to be able to go through in the first place um, I would definitely label it as a starter. Then next we have the tour guide uh, From the underworld. This is a no-brainer normal at summon out a rhino warrior and then link off into cherry beanie And you're so far ahead at that point but a lot of times people will ash this card and then you just have like a Gallus or a Tracker to follow up, and then you're already just far ahead in the game at that point. And then of course, Sekka's Light um, draws into a lot of cards, a lot of extenders that you need, uh, and can also put a card back in the deck that you don't want, or something you might search later, like uh, Gigantes or Fossil Dinah. So this card, 100% a starter card as well, in my opinion. Okay, so next we have our uh, superior extenders, things that are going to help build upon the plays that are starters are able to establish so things like rhino warrior things like gallus plays things like mathematician plays tour guides uh seca's lights etc etc and these are those cards in my opinion uh the danger engine is so absolutely amazing in here um and since i've dropped hydrolander i've gone uh, to a bit bigger of a danger engine what i mean by that is adding the double mothman um of course jackalope and suchinoko really need no introduction they're level threes they help knock cards out of your hand that you'd rather have in the graveyard, and there's a whole pool of those cards that we play, so these cards mesh very well with them. Uh, and then, of course, you have the Psychic Package, uh, which can combo together with any of your level 3 starting plays, whether it be Mathematician, Gallus, Rhino Warrior, Tour Guide, you name it, even some of your dangers. This card is really clutch, uh, again, to help make Dante, make Levier, it's a level 3, it's an Earth, all that good stuff that we want helps to go into Cherubini, and super easy to get on board but can only really get a lot of value out of this card after you've already done a starting play because um, you're not always going to want to normal with this and then have to hard open this to special some of the other to get in Cherubini. Um, so like this, uh, you could label as starters technically, but they're not really starters. So that's why I put them as superior extenders. And now here's another interesting part. Uh, the Seer and Graph. Um, I don't know why these guys are still at one. So hopefully they'll come back soon. Maybe in the next list. Uh, but these are cards that you could definitely quantify as starter cards uh, for a few reasons. Um, and that is because, again, all the BAs just simply special summon themselves from your hand while you have no set spell or traps, um, or no spell or traps on your field. Um, so you can special them uh, and then help, you know, make a uh, Cherubini. So like if you already have a normal of a Rhino Warrior, you can special the Graph and then get into Cherubini that way. Albeit that is not optimal because you want to send this off the Cherubini and then summon this off the Graph. Uh, to get the full combo going essentially but it's not necessary because uh, cherubini is just such a powerful card in its own right 
um, but these guys can definitely quantify as starters uh, in that case just their special summoning capabilities but they are best labeled in my opinion as superior extenders because the graph gets the seer and the seer revives the dante the dante adds back the seer and the whole cycle begins so i definitely put those guys there now we'll go to the additional extenders uh, which are a bit harder to set up essentially uh, things we usually won't go for until later in our combo etc etc um, and those cards i have labeled as the gizmek orochi the distrudo giant rex libic edgem saber c archiver olion glow bulb and the dotscaper um, and then here you could also label the rest of the rock package for the most part in terms of block dragon and your gigantes uh, for a few reasons so this deck has a ton of additional extenders which is what i think makes it its you know weakest point uh, for the most part because these cards tend to attribute to uh, most bad hands when you see multiples of these together um, but again it's very dependent but a lot of these cards can sort of take the role as superior extenders and even starter cards for the most part um, and for example, these cards here could take the place as starter cards, um, simply being able to normal summon an Edgem Sabers, then follow up with a Tracker or a Gala. Same thing could be said with the Sea Archiver. Um, these cards, not so much, you know, they're hard, you know, graveyard effects that we want to use. Uh, these guys, same thing there, even the Gizmek. Um, the Block Dragons as well, and same thing with the Gigantes. Uh, they're all a bit harder effects to get to. Uh, they can attribute to bricks but you need to play them uh 100 uh, but again these three cards here could be labeled as starters uh superior extenders even uh, but i just decided to put them here in the additional extender category simply because um they're not the most optimal effects but they're definitely necessary for the game plan edgem sabers is insane this card literally just allows you to stack your deck like quite literally if you have a card that you don't need in your hand and you already made cherubini you can put this back uh, a card back with Cherub uh, the Edgem, and then Cherubini gets Graph, and then that card gets shuffled back into the deck essentially uh, for later to either try to mill it again or draw it off a of Saryuja, whatever it may be. And then, of course, Block Dragon is just absolutely absurd in this deck. Uh, when it hits the grave while it's on the field, uh, you can add up to three rock type monsters from your deck whose total levels equal eight, and uh, that is a once per turn, but its ability to summon itself from the hand of grave by banishing a total of three earth monsters is not a once per turn which makes this card super super lethal and it also gives protection to all rock type monsters um you know from destruction by card effects so that card is just absurd in its own right and then the card that it can surge alongside the fossil dino though of course is this card gigantes a walking heavy storm when destroyed by uh battle so this card um you know i hate to play three of them but you have to because searching the fossil dino is so crucial um, and if you lose all of these, you can't search the Fossil Dina, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, you just need to play them. Um, but they can, you know, trigger off a lot of good effects, especially with cards like Dockscaper and the Giant Rex, which are absolutely amazing. And of course, Glow Bulb for Nat Beast, all that good stuff. And Glow Bulb mills a card as well, too. So, I mean, what else could you ask for? Um, this, this list is 41 cards, and I added in the C Archiver as the uh, 41st just to kind of bump the deck count just over 40 to sort of spread uh, ratios out more uh, to make things you know seem like some one of like BA is a little less likely um, so yeah that's why I'm playing 41 at the moment although you could play 40 now on to the defensive category um, I have just two cards really and I guess you could say three um, we have uh, these three cards here um, this you could consider an engine requirement but I would also consider it a win condition, a floodgate in of its own right. Uh, sometimes if you have a really bad hand and you open this, sometimes normal summoning this card it can be enough. Um, it really can be. As weird as that sounds in 2019, uh, sometimes normal summoning a Fossil Dina literally turns off uh, an entire opponent's turn. Uh, and it, like I mean that 100%. Uh, again, the Farfa, this is a card that you could label as an uh, additional extender as well. Uh, but I would also label it as defense simply because a lot of times you're using this card is for defensive purposes. Um, whether you're using it off Beatrice, you know, dump that to the graveyard during its opponent's turn to banish something. Or if you're using it proactively during your turn to help break boards, you know, this card uh, serves many roles. It could be a starter as a level 3 for Cherubini, you name it. And then the Gizmek, this card uh, can be offensive, it can be defensive, you can use it to push for more damage, you can use it to block damage, you can help use it to help it to make Dingirsu. You can use it to help, you know, link climb and break boards. Like, this card literally does so many things in this deck. And I'm so glad that I'm playing it in here. Um, I think one copy is fine. 
because uh, drawing multiples, of course, is not good. Uh, again, it serves multiple roles. And I hope I was able to demonstrate sort of how these cards can serve multiple roles and how so many cards in the deck can serve multiple roles, which is really good. So a lot of times that when you have a deck that can have a lot of cards in it that can serve different roles and multiple roles rather, um, the deck is a lot more versatile because sometimes you have a lot of really weird hands uh, that can sort of get you into uh, a lot of really good plays through cards in your extra deck um, that just help you extend and get you to where you want to be, which your end board is, you know, the uh, Saryuja, Nappies, Fossil Dyna, Avermax, Block Dragon, etc, etc. So now we'll go ahead and discuss some of the things in the extra deck, just sort of by card here, um, not going in sort of any specific order. Um, the Saryujas, of course, specifically uh, for digging into your combo pieces uh, and putting back things that you don't want, essentially. Uh, so a lot of things that I'll do sometimes... Um, so one thing that I'll do sometimes is if I see uh, like too many uh, rock spirits or like uh, gigant or too many gigantes rather, if I see the fossil diner early, um, I will usually uh, put them back off of the Saryuja um, and then search them later off of a block dragon that I'm either linking away for this or something else. And also another thing is um, you're going to be using Dante to chain link block a lot uh, for the Saryuja. Uh, which is great because this card is going to essentially give you back a Burning Abyss monster every time to be able to put back a card for free into your deck that's a BA monster. Um, so this card serves a lot of purposes. It helps recycle, it helps float. Um, uh, you know, it's like it, you're just getting a free card to put back off your star. You just help, like, just keep more things in your hand. Uh, but yeah, Dante, it helps to recycle um, cards, uh, makes this card a lot better. And just gets your engine going, helps get things in the graveyard, etc., etc. Thing, same thing for Cherubini. Um, these cards are very much like starters or extenders, whatever you want to call them. Uh, like the hierarchy, I would put them at like your extension plays. Um, this is like the best card in the entire extra deck, uh, to be totally honest. Um, it just really is insane. Um, it, it dumps to level three. Uh, if you have your zone placement correct, uh, you can put something it points to before you use its effect. Uh, so if they ogre it, it just doesn't die and you get to send a card for free. And not to mention it sends for cost. So if they try to, you know, Valor it or whatever, um, or ash it, uh, they can't even ash it because it just sends for cost. Um, uh, it's just so good. Um, it goes for the graph, goes for the seer, all that good stuff. Uh, Dengirsu and Avermax um, essentially are serving the same role uh, in here. And again, um, huge shout outs to Ryan Fletcher for a lot of the ideas that I've gotten from him uh, for this deck. And uh, hopefully together we can help uh, make the deck uh, even better going forward. Uh, but yeah, Dengirsu and Avermax, main purpose of these cards is to protect the Fossil Dyna. Because ideally at the end of your field, you're going to have a Fossil Dyna on the board. Uh, either being protected by this card or by this card so if this card were to die by battle you detach if it were to die by you know card effect if you don't have a block dragon on the field you detach and then if this thing's on the field um you know they can't attack it they can only attack this and then you have a block dragon to protect from destruction by card effects um so these guys are serving the role of defense uh specifically to keep your floodgate up uh this is extension um and this really helps you to sort of like play around um you know what your opponent is trying to essentially stop you from doing it's like a re-raise ceiling card almost uh, because a lot of times like call by the grave uh in ash can be super detrimental uh to some niche cards like glow bulb um or fossil dyna or whatever it may be so if they ash your glow bulb or they dd crow it essentially you can use the levier to get those cards back and even if you mill this card early on you can use the levier to uh bring this back from vanish because this essentially becomes just block dragon food until you bring it back off the levier so um re-raise ceiling extender um amazing card for sure uh and then just some uh, generic removal uh, but again, a lot of times this is just sort of link fodder, uh, more extension, but really good removal. And since Saryuja has that down arrow, a lot of times going second, you can use it to help break boards and also get pluses out of it. Um, and then, of course, we have our Floodgate cards like Nat Beast and Appalooza. Um, you know, turning off spells, turning off monster effects, more Floodgates in the terms of, uh, you know, Beatrice, the Plan B essentially. Uh, extension and then just you know more removal and just uh, you know game winning cards essentially bombs usually when these cards come out you're just straight up taking the game right then and there the BLS link is just such an incredible card unfortunately it is so expensive um, but you could easily play a thing like Boralode in its place uh, if you don't have access to that card and curious this card is absurd uh, not to mention going against the Orcus board with Ip and Zero Boros a lot of times you can sum this to the zone that that Zero Boros points to this will trigger, you'll get to send a card, this will get banished, and then you get to add back a card from your grave. 
for free, essentially, because this still leaves the field and Zeroboros banishes face up, so you'll get your card back. You could use this essentially to dump Sekka's Light, uh, bait out the Zeroboros, and then add back a Sekka's Light for free. This card is absurd. 100% um, needs to be played in the extra deck, if anything. Um, I'm not going to go over the side deck. Um, I'll just, you know essentially stopping our opponent from playing so that we can play so we can win because a lot of times it all comes down to if we can play we can win etc etc so um but speaking of side deck i'll run through essentially uh some of the things that i would side out um you know as you see here i have cards like nibiru panker top stroll lock evenly matched lancia um you know depending on whatever the matchup may be these are the cards that i'm usually siding out it could be a rhino warrior uh, obviously the second lights are going to come out if the evenlies are going in um, Farfa sometimes comes out, but usually it's going to be maybe one of each danger that'll come out And then you can sort of see how sort of the room is, you know Growing in terms of what cards we can side out. CR Kyver can go. Deshuro can go a lot of times Especially if, in, if it's in later games and you don't want to take too much burn damage So um, you can side out a lot of these cards even the second Mothman can come out essentially because uh, Depending on the matchup you might want to take Mothman out completely so you don't give your opponent that opportunity for a free discard So these are just some things that you can uh, consider taking out or even how the fossil Dyna can go out if you're playing against something like true Draco uh, That can go out as well um, but yeah, those are just some things that I would side out for this deck for the most part. Some things I usually go to side out after all the testing I've been doing. Um, so now we'll go ahead and do uh, a couple of test hands to wrap things up. All right, so we're going to do one test hand to wrap up this video here. If you guys want to see a more in-depth test hand video, I can do a separate one in the future. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do one going for a test hand here because some of these test hands can take a pretty long time. And uh, I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be. Um, so yeah, we'll start with Mathematician. Our opening hand is not that good, to be honest. Um, I would send the O-Line here. Um, but, uh, having the Seer in our hand is going to be pretty awkward. Um, I will, I will send the O-Line. Um, yeah, we'll send the O-Line, get our level 3 token, uh, and then link this off and this for a copy of Cherubini. Uh, and then we'll use, uh, let's see, Graph, uh, to summon... The Libic, uh, because again, Libic will be able to summon the Seer from our hand if the Libic leaves the field. Um, because essentially, what we can do, uh, if the Nessie hits the board, um, or whatever danger that we get off this hits the board, we can make a Curious pretty easily. So we have no choice, unfortunately, but to danger right off the bat, and hopefully, our Nessie goes through. So we'll roll one, two, three, four, um, and it is the Seer, unfortunately. Um, not much we can do there. We won't use its effect. So we'll special the Nessie and draw a card. We end up drawing into a Psychic Tracker, uh, which is pretty good. Um, definitely better than nothing uh, at this point. Uh, so we'll special this. Then we'll go into Dante. Now, ha not being able to get access to the Seer is a little annoying uh, sometimes, just because uh, you use it to bring back the Dante after you make your first Saryuja. And, um, you know, not having that is a little, uh, you know, makes things a little bit harder to combo, essentially. Uh, so we're going to try to pull this combo off without being able to have access to the Seer. We did mill a Dotscaper here, and I am going to use its effect uh, as soon as it hits the graveyard to be able to summon itself out. But at least we we're still able to get to Dante, so we can chain link block the Saryuja at least. Just hope they don't have the, uh, you know, the impermanence. We're going to add back the Seer, because um, Seer can actually come in clutch still with a Saryuja effect since we haven't used Seer's effect. And we'll draw one, two, three, four... Luckily, our luck has changed, um, and we'll put all three of these back. We don't even need the Seer at this point, really. Um, we'll just put all of those back, uh, and then work with all of these cards. So, what we're going to do here is use Saryuja's effect to special summon this, and then use the Sierra Kyber effect to summon itself out. And then we'll use the effect of Gallus now to mill a card and summon itself. They'll take a six, then we'll use this Gallus to mill another card, and they'll take another six. Now, we did hit the Rhino Warrior, so we're going to use Rhino Warrior's Effector to dump the Seer that we haven't used, and then we'll be able to use that to summon out the Dante. So, everything kind of works out perfectly there. Uh, so, now at this point, uh, we're going to see... Okay, can we do a... Um, I'm just trying to think of this way we can do a Curious right now, because we don't, ha we don't have access to Block Dragon just yet, which is okay, because we still haven't gone into our second Saryuja. Um, so, what I'm going to do is link off these four into a 
uh, a Saryuja. And we haven't used that Gem Saber's effect either because we got it on the board using the Saryuja. And thanks to the getting that Seer back, we can use uh, the Dante here to chain block. We'll add back Seer uh, as our choice, and then we'll draw one, you know, two, three, four. We end up drawing into a Mathematician, a Block Dragon, a Mothman, and a Glow Up Bulb. Uh, I'm going to put back these three, just like that. Uh, now that we're on our second Saryuja, we're not going to want to really be able to use uh, its uh, summon effect, but we technically can since we have two level threes here that we can use to just banish the fossil dino uh, and bring it back off levy here. So we'll use Saryuja here, uh, and then we'll use Block Dragon to summon itself out, and we will banish, uh, let's see, that, that, and that. And then we'll link these two off just into a copy of, let's see here, just into a copy of the Cerberus, uh, because this will just act as uh, more Earth Fodder, essentially. Uh, then we'll use the uh, Block Dragon effect here to be able to add a copy of Gigantes and a copy of Fossil Dino, just like that. Um, and then at this point, we already have the means necessary to be able to make uh, a Levier, thanks to the Archiver and the Gallus. Uh, so first things first though, I'm going to special summon the Gigantes uh, by banishing the Saryuja. And then we'll use the Glow Up Bulb effect to mill a Sekka's Light, which is no big deal. Uh, we might be able to, we're not going to mulligan that actually because we need the Fossil Dye in our hand to banish. We'll make the Nat Beast right there. And then from this point, uh, we'll go ahead and summon the Block Dragon by banishing the Glow Up Bulb, Gigantes, and the Fossil Dyna. And uh, we'll put this right here. Um... Now, the next thing we can do is link these two off into a copy of uh, a phoenix. This is my graveyard right here. We can make a phoenix uh, right on top of it. And let's see how many earths we have in our graveyard at this point. Um, okay, so we still have a good amount of earths. Uh, so now we'll link these two off into a copy of Avermax because we still need that on-field protection in the battle phase uh, for our... Um, our uh, Levier, or not a Levier, but our Fossil Dino. But speaking of Levier, we'll go ahead and make that now uh, by special summoning it there. And then from this point, we're going to go ahead and summon Block Dragon uh, one last time uh, for this turn, banishing those three, just like this, put that there. And then we'll detach the Earth Monster to summon out the banished uh, Fossil Dino, just like that. So ending on a bit of a different field. We don't have the Saryuja on board still, um, but we don't need it because we still essentially have everything we need uh, to protect our board. So we went about dealing with that uh, hand uh, pretty nicely, I would say. Uh, and for turn, we're drawing a Destrudo, which we can mulligan back with the Sekka's Light if need be. So pretty good turn there. Um, yeah, and uh, it's, this isn't usually the end field. Usually the end field looks something more like this, uh, but we get to keep the Saryuja. Usually that's what the end field looks like. Uh, but this time around, it ended up playing out a bit differently where we ended up linking off the Saryuja and putting the Avermax up top and still being able to use the Levier uh, very clutch to be able to bring back that Dyna. We could also use it to bring back the Bulb, etc., etc., to make Nat Beast. Um, and then, you know, use the uh, Saryuja to special summon the Fossil Dyna last, etc. So this card comes in clutch more ways than one. Uh, so I highly recommend people play it in here if they're going to play this deck. Uh, but yeah. That's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did. Any feedback uh, in the comment section below would be appreciated. Um, but yeah, as always, we're going to kill a sign out. We'll see you guys in the next one.